I'm Catherine Maudsley, Curator Senior Advisor of the MK Lau Collection in Hong Kong. We welcome you to A Taste of the Masters, co-presented with Sotheby's. The MK Lau Collection was created by Victor Lowe and is named in honor of his wife. The artworks are the finest examples of their period and reflect the interests of the artists behind them. In particular, their concern for nature predates our own anxieties about the state of the planet today. Beginning in the late 1970s, the MK Lau collection coincides with China's opening up to the world and thus its transformation into the modern culture we know. You have multiple references to faith from figures who brought schools of Buddhism into China and who have been extremely influential in shaping the way people think and approach life. We do have two paintings in particular on view here of Bodhidharma. I would say one of the great, great deep joys of Chinese painting is that it's integrally related to, in this sense, 20th century or more traditional Chinese ways of thinking. Understanding Taoism, Confucianism, Buddhism, looking at the five elements, really the core philosophical views. There is one example of a Tang Dynasty poem by yes. Luisi. Yes that is used as a basis yes. for the illustration. Yes. Yeah. It's a deep, a deep foundation of knowledge of, of traditions and years gone be, before. So we can easily, and there are many other examples, we can easily reference Tang Dynasty, Song Dynasty, just a beautiful visual vocabulary. This, however, comes with connoisseurship. So it may not be evident right from the get-go, and this is why Chinese painting is really as, as a fascination, as a lifelong interest, is truly lifelong. To probe the depths takes time. You talked about the different elements that we should look for in a work, be it landscape, flower and trees, figures, mm -hmm. but there's also the paper which we talked about and the inscriptions yes. which are written on them. They tell us the artist's state of mind. The dynamism is bringing us into the life force of the artist. And the inscriptions very often, because they're very uh, personal, um, very often beautifully poetic, bring us into the state of mind. There's also another element that we find a lot in Chinese paintings, which are dedicatory inscriptions. So meaning when a painting is presented to or gifted to someone. Because remember, all of this took place before there were commercial art galleries, before there were auction houses, how, was the, how were the paintings disseminated? What happened after they left the artist's studio? Very often it was within, within an intimate circle of friends and family. So we, we find a lot of paintings that are for celebrating people's birthdays. We have 12 works on Song Dynasty <laughs> paper. Can you believe it? It's Song Dynasty, so we're talking about 900 years? So right? the works are from the 1900s. Right, 1933. 1933, right. but the paper predates that by centuries. Yes. Why? Essentially, paper is one of the treasures of the scholar's studio. So ink, brush, paper, and inkstone. Those are the four treasures. So that gives you your kind of, if we're talking about a language, these are your basic building blocks for Chinese painting. Using paper of that antiquity, an artist must be terribly confident because once the ink goes onto the paper, you cannot undo it. It's taking us into different dynasties. And we talked a little bit about man in nature earlier. You see, man is just here. So small <laughs> and <laughs> insignificant compared Absolutely. to that's what the, surrounds him. That's the message. That's the message. So one, one beautiful thing to look for in Chinese painting always, ah, this is exceptional. Look at this person. Tiny. Sitting on the top, on the canopy of a pine tree to get the view of the wonder, absolute total wonder of nature. And as you know, Huangshan is what a UNESCO heritage, global heritage site, magnificent. So the artist and his brother and many other artists in their communities of like-minded people would go on sketching trips, but it's not necessarily en plein air, like the Western approach, it's absorbing the essence of the scene and then recreating it in the studio. 
The message, I believe, of this grouping of works, 36 paintings, is Chinese brushing painting stands the test of time with any other very major art form. And I'll cite, for example, Greek and Roman sculpture, Khmer sculpture, um, West Af Benin bronzes from Africa. So any great art form, um, it really transcends place and time. So here we are on a global stage and Chinese painting is one of the musts for understanding global culture, art, creativity, and, and inspiration. And I suppose that's also a very early expression of artistic multilateralism that gave way to a globalized world. I think they, they really truly became multicultural at a very early period in Chinese history. I'm James Chow. Join us again on The China Current for this three-part series with the MK Lao Collection.